Hello everybody, my name is Nadia and today I'm sick. I'm having severe flu, a sore throat and fever. Uh, flu is something like whenever there is a wind, I get flu. Swear sneezes, I get a flu. Every night I get a flu. It's like written in my in the in the makeup of my genes that I'm gonna get a flu, no matter what it is. <laughs> I went to the doctor. I have mild uh, uh, symptoms of asthma also because it's running in our family. So, yeah. Once upon a time, I went to the doctor and the doctor told me that every year you got to be getting a flu shot, the vaccine for flu. And uh, there are 40% chances, like 40% people out of, I think 40 people out of 100 get better. What about 60 people? And uh, I know I'm not that lucky that I will fall in those 40 people, so I didn't go for it. I am afraid of doctors. Why? Because not one doctor, not two, not three. I have a list of doctors who have misguided me, who have, like, if you take out my examples, I have examples around me of doctors. Who have tried their best to create fear and make a mountain out of a molehill. Let me tell you a story. When I was around like 14, 15 years of age, I, I, I was a sick child always, underweight and sick, sick child. I started having, after every two weeks, after every fortnight, I was, I, my blood pressure, I used to feel my blood pressure is too low. I was having fever and uh, this used to happen every two weeks, regularly started happening. I used to go to our family doctor and uh, there was an injection, they used to give me an injection and uh, I was up and running for two weeks and then again the same thing happened and then I have to go for the injection. He was our family doctor and since we were very, very little babies, we used to go to that doctor. And I asked him, I was like, I'm sick and tired of this thing. Can you tell me why is it happening and what's the permanent solution to this problem? Because this is, this seems to be a temporary fix. What is happening to me and uh, how to avoid the situation that I don't want to come oh, every two weeks for an injection and things like that. The doctor told me, the doctor laughed and he said, oh, come on, this, uh, you know, because of you coming after two weeks, we get to meet. And, and the, he, he cracked the joke, but it hit me very hard. I was like, he's not taking me serious. This is something, this is the attitude he showed me and he, he doesn't want me to get better permanently so I, I was very upset but what I did I started uh, you know first thing what I did was I I thought that this maybe is something I, I think like that I'm thinking like that 
I am uh, maybe I'm taking depression or I, I change I try to change my lifestyle eating more healthy and going on a walk and I try to fix myself and I got better this was just in my mind that I will fall sick it became as it became a routine and it became it uh, was programmed in my mind that after two weeks I'll be sick and I'll go and have an injection and get better. It was just my mind playing games with me. And most of the time it is true. Later on, life goes on and on. And once I fell off the stairs and I sprained my foot I uh, went to the Jura uh, the person who physically you know tried to fix the the injury it's called the, the what do you call the the conventional way I don't know what we call it, the desi tarika but after a week, uh, my uh, it was very swollen and it, its color turned into blue and purplish. So I went to the um, physiotherapist. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse moi. And that what happened was he gave me, uh, he, he looked at me and he was like, are you guys crazy? Are you guys like you foolish people? You went to the giraffe first. What, what are you doing in my office? This is crazy. You know, like um, you even educated people are doing such a thing. What a shame and this and that. He first harassed us. Then he, he showed me my x-ray and he was like, look at your, look at your foot, it's so blue. Let me first take a picture so that I don't want to take a blame for anything that I, I, I have a proof that this is how you came to me and you know, I, then he, he played the fear game. And then he was like, he showed me my, uh, my x-ray and he said, the bone is broken. And uh, he was like, I right now what I'm going to do, I will do the temporary cast. And that also cost us 4,000 rupees. And he said, then tomorrow morning, you gotta come to my my uh, clinic, which is a doctor's hospital, which is uh, Lahore is one of the uh, top notch hospitals. And he said that you, you come there and then I'll do the permanent cost. That may cost us like 10,000 to 20,000. That was that's what's gonna happen so what we did uh, he, he did the temporary cast because we we came under his pressure in his har harassment and his his uh, fear tactics we surrendered and he put on the cast and what happened later was the next day we went to a government hospital and uh, that is for the, for the specific specific hospital for just the uh, problems with, related to the skeleton and bones and fractures and something like that. We went there and the doctor told us that it was just a plain sprain and uh, no bone was broken. So, yeah. When I delivered Madi in the hospital, I was the only patient with the normal delivery among the 15 cases which she operated that day sometimes i feel that i am it is it sounds like an exaggerated statement but trust me it's it's a true statement i i'm so i so wish that it wasn't true but i have seen girls which were way younger than i was i was 29 when i gave birth to madi and i had seen uh, women, uh, the girls with 19 years old, some were very, very young, they looked like, and um, they were going through a C-section. I was the only patient. 
why I was the only patient because there was uh, she was so busy my doctor was so busy uh, operating c-sections and uh, she didn't have if they had time they could also cut me and uh, what what are you doing to a woman or a girl when you are doing the c-section at a very tender age at a very early age of her life what are you doing to her that's a plain torture a crime to my understanding i had a miscarriage and I didn't stop bleeding for three months. I'd been going to one doctor, to the other doctor, to my, to to the to the family doctors, to the doctors that I knew very well. They were like, "We don't know what's wrong with you. We don't know it." My doctor, she told me that. Now. Okay, what do you think? Do you want me to perform your DNC once again? Like if there is some something left inside. The ultrasound was showing there was nothing left inside. And she was asking me, what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? Come on. My doctor is asking me, what do you think? That should I go ahead and perform another surgery on you? And there was what happened later on. I changed, I, I did everything to to have a healthy diet, to go out for a walk. And I it, later on discovered myself that it was hormonal imbalance. My body was not able to understand what was going on, that it has lost a baby. And it was, my body was confused and on top of that, I was depressed because nobody was able to understand and I was not letting my, my body understand itself and do the thing. When uh, ever I go to the doctor, now what I have to do is not for myself. I go, like I, I did not get medicine even today. It will go on on its own. So, the Indian songs you guys could hear in the background. And my, uh, for, for my children now, I have to go if they have fever, things like that. Which is also a terrible thing. In this month, this is the second time that she fell ill and we had like this much bundle of medicines. Some are going to take a month or two there so that she won't fall sick again. Wallow? And sure is a terrible thing. So, uh, whenever I go to the doctor, I see women. <coughs> Excusez-moi. I see women that um, that are in their 40s or 50s or maybe younger than that. Are you taking your blood pressure medicine? Every other woman. Are you taking your blood pressure medicine? Yes, doctor. G doctor. The blood pressure medicine that you have to take every day. A blood pressure medicine slows down your heart makes you tired, makes you dizzy. Are 
Are you taking it? Mama, the wolves. See the wolves. Let me run away. I can give you another one. Let you run away. This one. I believe that all the scientific advancements, the medical breakthroughs, they were not done for the benefit of humanity. That was done for the benefit of science itself. Of the, of the benefit, for the benefit of the investors. You and I. Mama, we have Mama, no I don't, I don't, I don't.